the Canyonland Wilderness of Southern Utah features some of the most desolate and inhospitable terrain in all of North America. Matt Graham has been living by nature's rules and thriving on austere lands just like this for nearly two decades and knows better than anyone what it takes to survive out here. You gotta have your head on a swivel. You have things that'll take you out of the game here. Rattlesnakes, black widow spiders, scorpions, and an apex predator, the mountain lion. I first came out to this land about 20 years ago and started diving full time into the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. And to me, this is a tapestry. And I want to come in here and explore the art of this land. Matt, this terrain is pushing us farther and farther away from where we need to be. We have to get down sooner or later, because hopefully we'll find some water there. <sighs> Dude, there's no way we're going down here. That's borderline suicidal. You're but sure there's water down there? Definitely. I mean, look at the plants. There's box elders, cottonwoods. There's even river birch and willows down there. It looks like it's not quite as steep down that way, so maybe yeah. we'll have a chance. Let's do it. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> wow. It's pretty crumbly. <sighs> That's the only thing that concerns me. I mean, I don't see any other way to get down. I, I don't either. I think if we go really slow, don't put too much weight on the rocks, we can get down safely. Yeah. And, and I'm just jonesing right now to get down to that water that I know is there. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, dude. Nice and easy, bro. Yeah. It's slow. Cut over left a little bit, looks like. Yeah. It's really crumbly, huh? Yeah, you ain't kidding. We gotta be really slow, methodical with our footing. We're finding ourselves stancing on this crumbly rock and zigzagging back and forth. You wanna keep traversing along this way? Yeah, I'll come right straight down through here. I have more familiarity in this land and how this rock works, so I'm actually pretty elated to be coming down this cliff, and it sort of taps into the root of me being a kid again, so I'm like a big, hairy, bearded kid running down the rocks. How do you feel? We're gonna find out here in a minute. <laughs> well, that's one way to get down. Good lord, dude. You gotta be kidding me. I don't think we're getting down this right nope. here. And there's no way we're going back up. Well, hmm. we can keep looking, but I don't know. I think that's our best bet. Let's traverse along here and see if we can work our way back down. All right. Happy days. Good job, yeah, dude. Nice one. Take us to water. Hey, this could be helpful for a fire right here. I've got a little piece of yucca stock. I'm gonna have to find a different material for the hearth board, and that's gonna be really ideal to start a fire. Just collecting things along the way. Yeah. All right, man, collect us some water. Well, it's getting marshy in here anyways. Yeah, there's definitely some water under our feet. Oh, yeah. I can hear it. I'm sure this is water. Oh, Joe. It's oh, yeah. crystal clear. Oh, God, that's beautiful. Let's have a drink. I have to process it and he knows better than to think that I'm gonna drink it, because I'm not. I know I'm adding another layer of BS to this whole problem, but I have an idea for taking a prickly pear cactus, taking the spines off the outside of it, gutting it out, and then using that as a container to process water. The key would be finding a big one, right? Yes. We've walked quite a ways and I've seen them, but we weren't near water. If you can get a fire going, yeah. I could process the water. It's a cool idea, and then we can get some nutrients from the pad as well. Dude, if it don't work, then I have no choice but to drink it. But I'd like to at least take the safe route. OK. Done deal. For Joe to make his cactus container and Matt to make a friction fire, they will need cutting edges. But on this journey, they agreed to leave their knives at home and survive as the native Fremont Indians did for hundreds of years by using only what the land has to offer. Matt has been living in this kind of environment for almost 20 years. Hey, check this out. 
So he suggested to me that we don't bring our knives. And I was kind of like, eh, I feel a little naked without my knife. But he asked me if I was up to the challenge. And I said, yeah, you're on, brother. Let's try it. Take this corner. We'll get a big, big flake off here soon. face it. We, wow. we took it all the way down to that lip. That's awesome. I feel like using stone tools in a lot of ways creates an extra connection to the land. So you feel less separated and more in tune with the experience. And I, I'm starting to feel a sense that Joe's getting that. I mean, this is really sharp. I could feel this just, yeah. I mean, you could easily skin something with that. Definitely. And you can use all these pieces for woodwork. Dude, look at that, shaving the hair off the back of my hand. Now I'm feeling this sharp edge of this rock that I just made, and it got me right back into the game. Thanks, man. I think Joe's becoming a nature boy. With no container to collect and boil water, Joe has a plan to make canteens out of pads from a prickly pear cactus. So the first thing I want to do is just separate this thing. OK. Ouch. But the bottom line is I need to hydrate. Matt's already drank the water, and I haven't. Once I clean this thing so I could actually handle it, I want to open it and scoop out all the crap that's on the inside so it's almost like a container. And then once I do that, I can go down there and get water and process it next to a fire. And I really hope Matt can pull off a fire here. Joe, have you ever, you ever hand fished trout before? No. Oh, you're going to love it. We're going to walk up the creek, move into the bank, watch where they go. We're gonna move our hands in really slow, like Tai Chi, relaxed fingers. Okay. With hand fishing, the idea is that your hands are another fish going into this bank. So you gotta keep your fingers really soft and gentle. So first I'll come in like this on the side of the fish and I'll touch it that hard. And I'm just feeling for where its head is. Fish always swim forward when they're scared. So as you come around the fish, it's gonna swim into your hand, into that cup. But you got the tail and then you got the front part of its head. Man, I'm totally down for this. I love it. And the main thing, too, is, is walk like a fox on your toes because you don't want to disturb the ground too much. Done deal. All right, let's give it a go. All right, man. With hand fishing, the idea is that your hands are another fish. It's really a beautiful art because unlike casting a line, you're actually getting your hands on the animal, on the fish. He's sucked way back in there. One brown trout secured, it's Joe's turn to try his hand at this ancient method of fishing. Well, on you. As I'm walking along the stream, I'm looking at the banks like Matt told me, and all of a sudden I see this little shimmer in the water. trout and some local flora, which Matt collected into a salad, Joe is getting a glimpse into how Matt Graham lives as a hunter-gatherer in the canyons of southern Utah. We've been able to do all the same things we usually do, even with, with the knife. It's quite amazing, dude. This is, dude, this is really good. This is like really, really outstanding job, dude. Yeah. Really outstanding job. Man, I thought I just saw something up there moving. Where? Dude, oh, yeah. there's two people on horses up there. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Hey! 
No. Hey, man. 